Welcome cuties, let's create. I started doing a chair cover project and decided to share my process with you. I have felt and I already cut out some letters and what I did is I traced it with pencil so you can kind of see the pencil markings and I'm hoping that it eventually goes off by maybe rubbing it or I tried erasing it off but that just made the felt fuzzy so eventually I figured it out and I will tell you but what I did is I got two pieces of paper and I taped them together and then taped it onto a chair. And then I was able to trace the outline of the chair. So I have very rounded chairs. So I that's why it looks more round. I w was able to see what size I wanted for my letters because I'm going to be putting words on mine for the project that I am doing. The next thing is you want to cut out this pattern that you made, so the two pieces of paper that are taped together. And I honestly had no idea what I was doing. I didn't look up anything online, I was just kind of going at it and figuring it out as I went. And I do mess up and it did not turn out well my first go round and then learned what I needed to do next. But your things don't have to look exactly like mine because this is just the project that I was doing and what I was envisioning and what I was using it for. Yours can look much different. So this is just the top of a chair cover. This isn't even covering the whole chair. This is just putting over maybe like half of the back of the chair. So once you cut this out, you place it on fabric. And what I did is I was able to get fabric at Walmart pre-cut and it, they had four yards for $4. So it was actually a really good deal and I had no idea that they did that. And so I got this fabric and I put down my makeshift pattern and I traced it with pencil. And at first I used the pattern for two of the shapes. I'm just gonna call it shape because I don't know what to call it. So I used the paper and I cut out two different shapes and I trimmed them and I needed hot glue because I was not going to be using sewing machine because I'm not too familiar with the sewing machine and apparently I put my hot glue away when it was too hot so some of the sticks stuck to the gun but I decided to hot glue and I decided to start at the top again this was trial and error I found out that that was not the right way <laughs> that I should do it. So what I figured out is instead of using the pattern every single time, I used the pattern once, traced it, cut out that shape on the fabric, and then used that fabric and put it in a different and used that as my pattern and cut as closely as I could to the shape of the fabric and that worked out so much better because I'm not gonna lie I wasn't really following very well of what my pattern was because I I went over of where I traced where the pattern was because I didn't want it to be tight on the chair so it was loose and I was just kind of you know it just wasn't even it wasn't working and when I was done hot gluing my first one you'll see right here when I flipped it over it was like the hot glue makes it tight and closed but I had these weird bubbles it was going in in some places and then like I had this weird pocket I mean it was glued but I don't I have no idea what was going on so I didn't like it so that's when I decided I was going to use the same shape that I cut out hopefully that makes sense then what I did is for me I was putting on words onto these 
um, covers. And I learned that I cut out the letters first on pieces of paper and then was able to just stick it on top of the felt and cut it out. So that way I didn't have that, um, uh, what's it called, that pencil. And I hot glued all the edges. I hot glued the bottom so that way it wouldn't fray. And the hot glue, I'm not gonna lie, it does make it very stiff around the edges. If you were to use a sewing machine, it would be soft. You wouldn't have this, I, I don't wanna say crusty because that's a gross word, but hard, crunchy, I don't, I don't know what to call it. But that was the process. That was my learning experience. I placed down the felt letters first to see how I wanted them spaced and then went back and hot glued them on. You don't have to use words. You can use felt to make shapes. You don't even have to use felt. You can use fabric markers. You can, you know, you can be creative with it, but I'm not gonna put a pattern because every chair is different and every size is different because the chairs that I ended up putting them on these were a lot bigger than the ones, the chairs at my house. But I think they actually turned out really well. I think they turned out really cute. Um, they're not perfect, but I think that's kind of what makes them cute is that, you know, they kind of have this, you know, it's a homemade look, you know, that's, I was, I mean, I'm, I am kind of a perfectionist and I do get a little bummed when it doesn't look perfect, but I am learning to embrace the homemade look. <laughs> I'm embracing the edges. I'm embracing the gross, crusty edges and, you know, I, I really liked it. Um, it was a learning process. It did take a while because I had to make seven. So I had to cut out 14 of the fabric shapes because you want, you know, you have to use a side. And so whatever is going to be on the outside, you have to make sure that you're technically gluing the two outside pa pieces are facing each other so that when you flip it over it will be the way you want sorry by the way my camera keeps shaking i have a new camera system and whenever i accidentally bump it it shakes the whole thing <laughs> but just ignore the slight shaking at points but i feel like i turned out really successful of not knowing what i was doing and just kind of figuring it out as i went and I am very pleased and let me know what yours looks like. Tag me whenever you follow any of these. Please tag me with the, t uh, use the hashtag creating my cuter thing. So that way I'll be able to see what yours looks like, whether that's, you know, using these chair covers or any of the things that you create while listening and watching. And because I'm curious to see what your creations look like and how you use your creativity.
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, leave a like and a comment. Until next time, keep creating.